Good evening everybody. Rihanna DeWitt, 2001. Hello, welcome. Nice to see you again. And Kastang. Hello and welcome. Well, I've got lots of rings tonight, so uh, I'm going to make something. <laughs> Don't quite know what I'm going to make, but I, well actually I do know what I'm going to make, but I'm going to keep it um, to myself for a little bit. So I am just going to uh, prepare a few rings. And then we will uh, we will put it together. So I trust you are all doing well. So forty two rings I calculate this will need and that's hopefully what I've got in front of me well 42 of these size of rings anyway and uh, I've got some little tiny ones that I will need um, just unfasten all of these I don't know how they manage to get themselves all joined together but they do and then these just need all closing up All of these large rings, I don't need them. Uh, don't need any of them open tonight. Oh, these anyway, for this pattern. See if I can get into the practice, back into practice for closing rings. Last night it was taking me ages. I just could not manage to close a ring properly for uh, for trying. Okay. With practice, you can sort of just you just kind of know where the right position is uh, when you twist them, and uh, they line up virtually perfectly. But uh, last night I could not get them to line up. And how am I doing? <laughs> I kind of did avoid that, didn't I? I'm doing quite well, thank you very much. Uh, you'll have noticed I haven't been streaming for a while. I had some really critical stuff to do at work. Which was uh, taking up a lot of time. Uh, working long hours and I did not... Uh, didn't feel like doing any art or crafts at all, never mind uh, streaming. Um, so I was away for a little while. Hopefully, hmm. hopefully I'm back. And I've still got the still got the pyrographic lion to complete, but uh, I wanted to change, do something different. And as I've just got a few. Uh, Quite a few rings uh, arrive in the post. Today I am uh, doing a little bit of uh, chainmail jewellery. This is going to be a pendant, but um, I'll try out some. Now, I've got a couple of experiments to try with, uh, with some uh, simple weaves, but in an unusual way. And then maybe we'll try a bit more complex weave. Something that sounds complicated, like viper berries or, or something like that. It's one of the things I, I kind of quite enjoy about um, the chain mail is the weaves that look really complicated, and they do. And uh, they're quite complicated to do until you learn how to do them, and then they, they're really simple. <laughs> Well, that's kind of like most things, I think, isn't it? It's um, no matter what the scale is, once you know how to do it, it's it's really simple. But uh, that's um, that's the skill, making it look simple. Uh. 
One of the things about uh, chainmail that always sort of surprises me is this is going to take 42 of these rings and probably something like about the same number of the little tiny ones I've got as well. And um, it, it really just amazes me is um, how many rings it takes. Just some of the some of what some of the simple looking bracelets that you make. Obviously, the longer they are, the more rings they take, but. Something like um, uh, this one, which we made on the stream last night. There's something like about 160 rings in that. It's only a seven and a half inch bracelet. And yet um, it kind of surprises me just how many rings it, it consumes. And then when you think you know, <coughs> it looks like it ought to take about two or three minutes to make. And then when you think there's 160 rings and you'd have to be sort of doing about 10 per second in order to make it take a couple of minutes. Right, well, come back here. Already they're trying to escape tonight. There we go. All I'm doing is just the way in which the rings are made, if you're not wet away, is they're made from a coil of wire basically. So they're very slightly open. So what I'm just doing is closing the gap, so there's a very slight gap, and then twisting them so that the, the ends line up. If you do it right, the ends disappear basically. You, you sometimes can't even feel them. Uh, and what I'm doing when you see me tip it like towards me is I am literally just looking at those two ends to check that they have lined up. So if I can see daylight or I can see the edge of the ring, it's not quite uh, closed properly. That one, for example, isn't quite, so I just yeah, tweak it a little bit. And occasionally, like this one, is ping, proving to be a little bit awkward. There we go. Oh, another one. Hmm. Part of the trick of trick, if there is a trick of doing it, is to make sure that the two ends are pressed together quite um, quite strongly because then friction also tends to hold them in the right place because the metal has sort of a memory to it. So what can happen over even a few minutes is once you've twisted the rings into place they very gradually relax a little bit and slip out of place and so you've then to tweak them all again. But if you can get the two ends pressed together, the friction actually holds them in place. And, and they don't do that. Which is quite useful. Coming up um, sometime this week, or maybe at the weekend, I have a 3D pen to try out, a Creo Pop. It's been sat in a box under the desk now for about a week. So it's about time I got that out, I think, and uh, had a play with it, see what it can do. Fluffy Twiglet, good evening, welcome. More rings. Not trains, rings. Right, and then uh, I need to open some of these little tiny ones. Now these are good. <laughs> these are going to be fun. That's fun as in not fun, but 
they're going to be fun mainly because they're so tiny quite difficult to get hold of and uh, you need good eyesight I'm wearing glasses I <laughs> may end up even having to get a magnifying glass out to uh, to see these in the end, but we shall see. Now I I could sit down and work out how many of these I need. Um, I haven't, so I'm just going to do a few, and then we'll uh, we'll weave some rings, and then uh, I know I'm going to need some more, so we'll open some more at the time. So we're going to do a, a Japanese style of weave, which is a which is a different different way to uh, to the European styles. So it's not something I've uh, done before. So we'll have a go with that. It's um, it's an easy weave to do, but I'm going to be applying a pattern whilst I do it, so that'll complicate it a little bit, but not much. Okay, a train shaped bracelet. Um, that that actually isn't as daft as it sounds. Using um, using Japanese style, you could actually make that uh, fluffy twirler. And of course, I've got the beads, um, so I could make could make a train on a on a bracelet, but. <laughs> Not sure too many people would be after one of those, so uh, we probably won't bother. Um, but now, what I'm now going to do is put four of these on. So, what exactly I'm going to make, I will just leave hanging for a little while. Almost literally. <laughs> um, I'll keep you guessing. Hopefully you'll like it at the end. It's a pendant, so it's not a bracelet. Um, so the idea is that it could uh, it could hang from a chain. I'm not sure whether to make a chain or whether to um, get something like a small sterling silver chain. And I'm going to have. I can see this is going to have. I'm going to have problems with this, but uh, holding on to these small rings can be a bit challenging just because you don't really want to hold on to them too, too strongly, but you kind of need to hold on to them with a bit of force just to stop them going all over the place. And I'm doing red rings on top of red rings. Which isn't the easiest combination of colours to see. There we go. So the Japanese Japanese style really is just just that sort of um, sort of pattern. So there's uh, a couple of rings with uh, smaller rings that just join them together. But one of the nice things about the, um, the style is that it is relatively easy to create patterns. Either, either large sheets and create patterns using colour or uh, shape shape the um, shape the overall outline, which is what I'm going to do here. I 
So it shouldn't be too long actually before you, you start to be able to guess what it is I'm doing, but... Um, Okay, so that's three. Now, having done that, what I'm going to do is join these three into a triangle. Being careful not to twist. Christmassy. Ah, uh, no, not Chris, not Christmassy. Thinking a little bit further ahead than Christmassy. And yes, Moobot's grown. Uh, you'll uh, notice a couple of new entries on uh, on what he's telling you about there, or if it's a he or a she, but. Uh, There's a couple, well actually there's three, <laughs> uh, bracelets on um, eBay at the moment. So if somebody was interested in buying one and doesn't want to wait, those are available immediately uh, on, uh, on eBay. So there's the first three, we now just keep adding. Oops, come back here rings. this add a little bit more make it easier to get through so I just keep adding in pairs here um, I could do it using single rings and um, using an even tinier ring than this but uh, to be honest they look a little bit sort of thin uh, and not very substantial, so I'm using doubled, doubled up. I could use triple as well, but um, then I'd have to go to slightly, slightly larger rings. And I don't want it to look too bulky. tend to start losing um, just where you are on, on these things as well. Uh, I cannot see. There we go. I can see I'm going to end up having to wear magnifying lenses um, like a head head mounted magnifying uh, unit just to be able to see some of these things sometimes because you need good vision Claire good evening and welcome nice to see you again not long to go now only another week well a few days really um, yep, I need another one on the end of that. Got to remember my pattern. believe it but these tiny rings are actually harder to uh, to close than the bigger ones M mainly because they're um, you can't use as much you gotta be a bit more gentle with them 
because they're finer uh, wires so they bend a lot more quickly uh, and you can end up with rings out of shape um, but also um, just because they are so tiny days. It's Monday today, isn't it? Is it? What's the first day? It is Monday. So you're finishing on Thursday. And there's Fluffy Twiglet says, language. There's no need for it. This is one time when having a little bit longer nail comes in useful because I can just run it across the edge and just feel whether I've actually managed to close that properly. Okay, so it looks like a bit of a jumble of rings at the moment, but uh, we're getting closer to it actually starting to be a recognisable shape. And I'm betting this is probably the most awkward bit about this one. Never actually made this shape before. In actual fact, I've never, strictly speaking, never made a pattern using Japanese weave before. I've done one using three rings. Just to test out an idea, but um, this will be the first one that's actually practically been made. Open that a little bit more. Thursday. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I, I wish you luck with it kind of envious in a way and I wish you luck okay that's yep that's the ship so I need to open some more of these red rings little tiny ones Those two are open. Let me move those out of the way. Come on. Come on out. Come on. There we go. There's a few more. <laughs> that that, that uh, fluffy twiddler is, is almost like... Um, what is it? A cat? By, the, what is it? By the power of grey skull or something. Um, kind of sounds like a cartoon uh, quote now that I watched that particular cartoon I don't actually know which one it is but uh, for some reason that's the one that came to mind Uh, anybody that's watching that doesn't realise, um, I do well quite often do quite a few different crafts on uh, on stream. You're watching me do some chainmail or jewellery at the moment. Quite quite enjoy making jewellery out of chainmail. Chainmail is the technique of uh, weaving rings or inter interweaving rings to come up with something. So it's not armour. Um, as a lot of people think, um, you create armour using chainmail techniques um, and the two have sort of become synonymous with each other but um, you know, the, the technique of weaving rings is um, is one that's used quite a lot in jewellery 
Um, essentially, that's how a chain is made by interweaving rings. And chains are used a lot. But um, the Byzantine chain, which a lot of people know as jewellery, is, is, you know, is a chain mail technique. Um, but I do other uh, crafts as well. Um, if you were around a little bit earlier on the stream, you'd have heard me mention pyrography. Um, painting with heat, or wood burning as people call it, but we don't actually burn wood. Or very rarely. Hopefully the idea is not to burn it, but to create a picture. And uh, I do also scrape a board. Now that's uh, taking a board which to start with looks black and as you scrape the surface you reveal white uh, porcelain clay underneath and you form your image in black and white um, by scraping away the black surface. And uh, it's, it's kind of like drawing with a white pen but backwards. So you're taking away something rather than adding in and then you can apply ink to the porcelain clay for colour which is quite effective, as I discovered the first time I tried it. Um, you will also, although it's a little bit rarer, but I do carve as well. So actually using very sharp chisels, which I keep sharp, and you'll see me uh, on stream sharpening it more than once, um, to create, um, normally I work as uh, using relief carving. So that's kind of like carving a picture really um, so you've got a flat back rather than a full 3d object but um, that's something else that i do and also uh, another craft has been punch craft that's a bit like miniature rug making uh, that's that's fluffy twiglet's favorite because it's got trains on it <laughs> um, but uh, there's there's another craft that uh, that we do from time to time. Um, at the moment, jewellery, as I mentioned. And uh, whilst I'm mentioning jewellery, I might as well just remind people um, about the shop, which is illustrated. Um, uh, the, there's a link on screen, and Moobot will pop it up from time to time. Uh, there's a shop on Etsy. which I think is quite good, but there again I would, it's my shop, so if you have any feedback you're quite welcome to uh, to let me know. Uh, and those images that you see in the bottom left, most, well all the jewellery is, um, is jewellery, <laughs> and that's available on the, uh, on the store in Etsy. The pyrography and scraper board images that you'll see down there aren't yet 